So way back at planning, we put those emergence flag kits out. So now we're uh, October 13th. Going to go out in the field. Got a GPS pin marked on my phone so I can walk right to the flags. A couple buckets. Collect the ears and see what they look like. So they found the flags. So the blue is day two. Green is a day one emergence. Yellow is three. Red is four. If you remember, I'm kind of doing two things out here. I'm comparing rows six and seven. So with a seed firmer and without a seed firmer. And also just the emergence within the row. So there's a row seven, day one emerger. And here's a day two flag that no longer has a plant next to it. A couple day twos in the non-seed firmer row with no plant next to it. So that means... They were sprouted when I put the flags out, but they didn't make it. I kind of did this one purposely in this spot because this was tough. It was getting later, so we needed to plant. It was a little bit wet, and this was a higher clay spot, so it was a little tight. Going down the non firmer row, there's a two. There's a two. Here's one that must have come really late that I didn't even mark at all, so it didn't even make day four. You can see there's like just a cob in there, like an inch long. So all that one did was consume a few resources that its neighbors could have had. Got the ears all laid out by row and by day with the flags. You can see no day fours on either one. So this is row six. This is the one with no seed firmer. This is row seven, the one with the seed firmer. A couple interesting things. I said I had two flags out there, two day two flags with no plants by them. Uh, so I should have been too short on ears. I was actually one short. I went back out and I did find another one. I skipped, found that little nub there. So I had 20 day twos on row six and ended up with 19 at harvest. But the odd thing is on day one, I flagged 12 of these with the seed firmer, only harvested nine. So I think I might run back out to the field and actually pull all my flags out of the ground, double check I got my count right, because that, that seems odd that 25% of those just didn't produce an ear from day one, although we were in tough conditions, so there may be something to that. Let me add, you'll see here, there's a lot more day twos than there are day ones. On day one, those were barely, barely out of the ground, and that was like eight o'clock in the morning. So I'm thinking a lot of those day twos probably would have been day ones if like I'd went out in the afternoon so that's something but I'm gonna end up I think I'm gonna shell all these by hand and weigh them I have a hand sheller that will help me with that I want to do it with my thumb and my finger but um, I'm gonna weigh these weigh these by day and then weigh them by row and we'll just see how much weight there is uh, average per year and see which comes out the best um, by the day and seed firmer no seed firmer Okay, I thought I was going insane. Went back and pulled the flags. I had 29 flags. I had 29 plants that I'd pulled the ears off of. So I was like, maybe carrying the two buckets out of the field, I spilled some of the ears pushing through the end row. I found one right by the lane where I came out because I could, I could see stuff leaned over. And I found the second one in a sprayer track. I was using a sprayer track that had knocked down corn back at spraying fungicide at tassel time. And I was out there for an hour. I couldn't find the third one. The third one exists, I'm sure, because that's the only way things would, would add up. But anyway, we do the average weight. I think since we're only missing one ear, our average weight's not gonna change. So we're still gonna have a good idea. Sorry about that. You feel really dumb uh, when you're in a 250 acre cornfield looking for an ear of corn and you can't find one. So anyway, on to the results. So here's the results from that field. So that's home south is where we had a little bit tough clay conditions. So you can see I'll highlight we had day one color coded for the flags here, day two, three, four. So back in the spring, we had six plants emerged on day one, and I harvested six plants. So I did that for each row. You can see we had the one there missing on day two, three out of three on day three. So the next column, we had the total weight in pounds of all the shelled kernels from each day. 
So when you look at those, but what's interesting, we get over here the next column to the average weight. So day one was 0.54, day two was 0.49 pounds, and then we dropped a little bit more, 0.45 for the three year average on day three. So then I recorded the moisture, got an average moisture, so we could dry it down. So we had a total wet weight of 13.82 pounds for 28 harvested ears out of 29 that emerged. And the average weight happened to be the same as day two, 0.49. So then I used a formula I found on a seed company website to dry this down mathematically to the industry standard dryness of 15% is actually you go to 15 and a half percent and then you take a half a percent for handling loss. So we do that and then we go to the dry yield. If you look down there on the bottom left, I just use the formula because these flag kits are for one one thousandth of an acre. So I took that total dry weight times a thousand. So that's total pounds on an acre divided by 56 pounds per bushel, which is the industry average for measuring bushels. That's the test weight. So that gets us 226.25 bushels per acre. So we do that all over again for the row with the seed firmer next door. So 12 and 12 on day one, even though I only found 11, but you'll find if I even take out their average weight of half a pound, we have a total dry weight or, well, that's the wet weight, the 0 0.54, 0 0.3, 15.37 versus 13.82. Even if we take out that half pound for that year, I didn't find the firmer is going to come out ahead. What was shocking to me was we have 249, almost 250 bushels here compared to 226. So like 23 and a half bushels better for a seed firmer. That's a uh, kind of hard to believe, but that's the result I got. Uh, we only have the two precision planting smart firmers on the planter. We haven't run firmers on every row um, just because we haven't run liquid since 2011. So we haven't had firmers on every row since then. This is making me think we should go back. Uh, I got to uh, put new disc openers on the planter this year. Be a good time to put firmers on. The uh, quick, quick attach brackets are already there, but let's look at the other field I did this in where we had better planting conditions and see what happens. So I did do this twice, did it in another field and you can see there is a lot more day ones from both rows. Uh, Dad reminded me this field because we had a kind of a, you know, not drowning, but just damp spring. And he reminded me uh, when we were in this field, uh, we both commented, oh, this is the first day we've had like ideal planting conditions all season. So goes to show there's a bunch more day ones than in the intentionally tough conditions I did for the first set of flags. So I will show all these and weigh them just like I did before. You won't have to watch that whole process, but uh, I'll get you the results. So here's the other field. We ran this test in another emergence flagging kit, a little better planting conditions here, maybe about the only perfect planting conditions we had all spring so no firmer 28 emerged plants 28 harvested ears and that matches all the way down the line day one two and three there are no day fours so same thing total pounds per day and then so our average now this is kind of interesting uh, day one's not quite as high as day two there are definitely a lot more day ones but you can see we get a drop again on day three with just the two years that emerged on day three. Now you see we have 33 total. I planted 34,000 on this field where I was only planting 32,000 on the other field. So that's why there's a couple more ears. So we go and we have the total wet weight, dry weight, and convert that to the dry yield. So about 234 bushels per acre with no firmer. So go through all that again. Numbers match up again, pretty much almost all day one emergers with the firmer. So we had one more day one emerger there and no day threes or day fours with the firmer. And see the day one was slightly higher than the no firmer and it was the same for day two. So go through all the calculations again, 
we come up with almost 247 bushels. So we're about 13 bushel an acre better there. I think that's still a pretty big number for a seed firmer, but it's really got me thinking we might need to put seed firmers on all those rows for next year, or maybe put more on and uh, leave one or two rows off and run this test again and see if we can repeat. That might be a good idea. So I definitely learned something from my flagging kits. That was an interesting experience. If you want to know more, you can go to emergencematters.com. You can see why Emergence Matters. You should be able to order a flagging kit for next year if you want to. So it comes with all the flags, a little brochure how to use them. Get all your colored flags there. Uh, get this handy tool for digging up your seed trench at planting. Check your depth, all that good stuff. So just go check it out. EmergenceMatters.com. Thanks for watching.